Hello, everybody, and welcome to Rafino's Italian Restaurant. Larry Matson here with you with another edition of Sports Scene Live. And uh, we are doing the show this week at Rafino's, and I wanted to mention that because they have a, a Sunday brunch. We're taping on Sundays. They've got a special Sunday brunch features here that are really outstanding. A great place to party, great place to play in your holiday season right here, and just really one of the better restaurants in town. No question about that. And uh, Ruff and Rodrigue owns the restaurant now. It used to be Donardo's. You may remember it. It's on Highland Road between I-10 and Airline, and uh, Ruff and Rodriguez played at LSU. His father played at LSU, and a quick note on that, his father was all SEC and played when Joe Namath and Steve Spurrier were all SEC, and my old friend Tucker Fredrickson, who was the number one draft choice in the NFL that year, played at Auburn. The interesting point is that they have a beautiful portrait in the main dining room here that shows Ruff and Rodriguez number 68, and in the same picture, it's a uh, picture of number 51, his father. So it's a father-son uh, duo there. It's pretty cool. They also have pictures all around the restaurant of some of the famous celebrities that have dinner here and have eaten here. And one picture shows Ruffin with Jimmy Taylor and Billy Cannon, who had played in the same backfield one year. And, of course, they both passed away most recently. And uh, we wanted to uh, talk about that. But at any rate, it's uh, a great place to come eat. Now, to tell you what we have, we've got the players of the week. We've got the three coaches to talk about the upcoming rivalry game and the possibility of playoffs as well. A lot to talk about, a lot in this show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Only one candidate for Parish Court has the experience to handle these cases. I'm Kim Landry. For over 20 years, I've worked in the courtrooms of Ascension Parish. On the front lines every day, working to ensure that justice is applied equally and fairly. My proven experience in the cases heard in Ascension Parish have prepared me to be your judge. I don't need on-the-job training to make difficult legal decisions. I'm Kim Landry, and I'm ready to be your next judge. Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic has five locations in the area, including Gonzales. Dr. Winder has provided the orthopedic care for both EA and Sanamo for many years. He's cheering on all area teams to make it to the playoffs. Brubacher's Grill at 909 East Ascension Street in Gonzales, where good food and good friends come together. Offering a casual, fun atmosphere with a menu selection to satisfy the whole family. From pizzas, burgers, and po' boys to steak, seafood, and salads with daily lunch specials and a whole lot more. Bring the whole family or meet friends on the deck. There's fun and entertainment for all. Make Brubacher's your next stop for lunch or dinner. And check out the other five locations in Baton Rouge. Taste the great tradition at Brubacher's Grill, where some things only get better. A&M Heating and Air Conditioning has been locally owned and operated by Tony Arsenault since 1988. They have an honest reputation based on sound advice and great service. Call A&M Heating and Air Conditioning today for all of your service needs. Bertrand's Pharmacy has been providing personal medication counseling for over 30 years. Andy and Jeannie Bertrand, registered pharmacists, honor many prescription plans. Bertrand's is open Monday through Saturday, phone 644-5641. Bro Welding and Industrial Supply prides themselves on same-day delivery. Customer service is our number one priority. They deliver on time, every time. Bro Company, serving the area for over 30 years on the web at broco.com. See FOT Financial Services for all your money needs. They have loans for any worthwhile purpose. Auto, furniture, appliance, home improvement, and vacation loans. Celebrating over 50 years of service, FOT Financial Services. A Bear Steel Incorporated, Gonzales and Baton Rouge, offers structural steel fabrication. A Bear Steel is a proud supporter of all high school sports in this area. Phone 644-5316 or 291-2144. Welcome back, everyone, to Rafino's Restaurant here. We are ready to talk uh, Dustown football with head coach Guy Mastretta. Four and five on the year, one and three in district. Uh, lost a Catholic this weekend, uh, last weekend. Um, in the first place, 67-yard touchdown, it had to be uh, a little, I guess, upsetting to see that happen right off the bat. It's frustrating because defense has been so good for us all year and uh, just got out of position, you know, going in. They do a whole lot uh, formation-wise. They try to outflank you, try to get you uh, out of gaps, and, and we, we had a break, up, break down right there. Uh, so you're down in the hole right off the bat. 
I thought after that our kids really fought and, and played well throughout the first half. Um, most of the first half, we were 17 down with about two minutes left and gave up two back-to-back -back scores uh, to really just open it up. And after that, it's really difficult. I guess it was frustrating to see that they were able to run the ball so well. Right? It definitely. Uh, and again, that's something that we've done really, really well throughout the year. Uh, and we'll get back to it. You know, for one, Calicao's a really good team this year. Uh, they got a lot of veteran kids, a lot back from that team they had last year. Uh, that won a state championship, so it's um, it, it's tough to go against them, and that's what we talked about during the week. We have, we really have to play a clean game to go against someone like that. Yeah, so you can't through their parish. They yeah, yeah. Three games. You know, it, but it's the same thing with with the other teams. Um, you know, it's all of a sudden they hit you really quick, and, and you get in the hole, and now you, when you start pressing to come back, it creates more more issues. You had a big flu when uh, Dylan Sampson goes 80 yards for a touchdown and runs for 130 in the game. Let me tell you what, um, he's a freshman. He probably had eight or nine Calico defenders touched him on that play. Wow. And it's just... Billy Cannon run. Right, well, it's just that it's what we're looking for from a competitive standpoint. Just never give up, keep fighting, keep churning. And um, great play for a great young man. And what we're looking for is some great things from him. You get 130 yards against a Catholic defense, you've got to do something right, blocking-wise well, and running-wise. Yeah, you know, I, I can tell you, and it's hard to say we only scored seven points, but offensively, we really did some good things. We had some, a lot of times where we had numbers on them, and one guy would beat us at a point of attack. Uh, we, we had Dre Monroe played a really good game for us at quarterback. It may have been his best game so far. Um, and we've had, there was four different times where we had receivers drop balls on a third down where it would have been a conversion, keep the drive going, and keep that Calico defense on the sidelines the that uh, offense. Of course, Catholic High is, is the class of the, of the uh, district with the, an unbeaten record in district play, and, and then, like I said, they swept through all three teams against uh, uh, the, the uh, Sensen Parish teams. What can you take from that that you can learn from the, the, the maybe when you play them next year, you know what they did. What you knew from last year, what they did yeah. to do this year. Can you take things like that and help you uh, right. build toward beating them in, in the future? Well, I think the biggest thing is just building the program. You know, it's uh, we we only started four seniors Friday night, so we have 18 guys that started against them this year that will be back next year. And they've had the um, experience of playing against them. So that's correct, and, that, and that's big. You know, throughout the year, it, this is one of those years, we came into the season knowing we were going to be a young team, inexperienced. Uh, you, you hope to work your way out of that. This year, the injury bug has gotten us. Uh, that's not an excuse. That's just part of it. You have years like that. I, I've had them before. Well, we're, we're fighting through that now, and it's difficult during the season you're in but if you handle it right and you keep the kids looking at the big picture, it can be really beneficial to the program moving forward. You know, we, we've started 42 different players this year out of 22 positions. Of those 42 starters, 26 of them are underclassmen. So when you, it, again, if you learn from your mistakes and you keep building off of it, it can be beneficial to the future. All right, the future now is McKinley. That's the next game up. Absolutely. And that's a big one for you because that one can determine whether you maybe make the playoffs or not make the playoffs. That's well, I, you're in I'm, the playoff mode almost right now. We, we, that's the way we're looking at it. There, there's an outside chance that we could get in even dropping this, but that's not, not in our vocabulary this week. Uh, it, it's to us, this is our first playoff game because once you're in the playoffs, it's win and you keep playing. And that's what we feel like this week. We've got to win this ball game and play next week. Uh, we play them on a Thursday night, which I love playing Thursday night games. Uh, I expect Griffin Stadium to really be rocking, and uh, we're, we're excited about it, and we, and we plan to have some really good practices leading up to it. And McKinley's had their moments this year. They've they played yeah. some very tough football at times. You know, they, they went through the deal with the LHSA sanctions earlier, uh, which really kind of messed up the whole continuity, I guess. But you look at the players they have. They've got weapons. Uh, they've got some really big physical guys, so we're going to have to play really well uh, because they can they can hurt you. And this is that they're, they're not allowed to play in the playoffs this year, so they know this is their last football game of the year. I'm sure that they're going to come out and really play 
with that type of attitude. Well, uh, Coach Signator had mentioned after his loss to, to uh, EA that he wanted his seniors to go out on a, on a happy note, and that's this game coming up to, to go out with, with a win. So yeah. they're going to really be pushing hard for their seniors. We would expect their best, and we'd want nothing more, you know, nothing less. We, we, we'll be excited to play good Thursday. The, uh, the, the game is at home, this one? It is. Right. Well, talk about that a little bit, about what you talk about Griffith Stadium is going to be be uh, pretty well packed up and uh, uh, it should be exciting. And when you have the playoffs on the line, that's got to add a lot to the fans coming to the game. It does, and I, and I hope they understand that. It'll be seen, We had our senior night for the football team a couple weeks ago. Senior night for all of our, our spirit groups, our cheerleaders in the band. That'll be on Thursday night, so hopefully we'll get a big crowd from that. Uh, and hopefully our students keep doing what they're doing. We've been really impressed with those kids. You went into the game with Kathy being 29th, and you know the top 32 make it. You dropped that game, but now if you win this one, you might come right back up into the upper 20s. Again. Well, as of today, we're still at 29. Okay. Uh, and that has to do with the opponent that you played. The, the better the opponent, right. the, the better your PowerPoint. So uh, we're at 29 today. If we can beat these guys on Thursday, we feel like we can get up to about 25, which means you're playing like a number eight seed. So um, that, that's hey, yeah, that's what you're playing for this I, week. I'd like you to comment a little bit about that, about how that works. Do you, you, you like the format of, uh, of the power rankings? In other words, it's not just it. wins and losses. It's, it's who you play and when you play and that type of thing. Right. I, I, I love the PowerPoints. Uh, you know, it's it, back in the day you knew ahead of time this district was – combined with this just district champion versus runner-up, all that stuff. Uh, now it's strictly based on performance. Um, you know, you, all of your, de depending on the, the caliber of your opponent, you get more points by their wins, and then you get points for your wins. So I think it's very fair. Uh, I think it, it really spreads things out. So, uh, I'm, again, all we care about is is trying to win this ball game and, and get the best seed. Because their own division wants the playoffs start too. That's another thing. Yeah, that's uh, that's a whole another story. We sit here all day. Uh, I, I've got uh, strong emotions and feelings about that. Having having coached both both private and public schools, um, I, I'm again we don't have near enough time today yeah, to plus discuss the that. Plus and minuses both ways. Absolutely, and I and and. I don't think either side truly understands what the other one goes through and the challenge. Everybody has crosses to bear. Uh, it's, it's hard to see what, you're, what the other guy does. Well, we're looking forward to a, a victory over McKinley and, and uh, not you know, taking anything away from McKinley or, or knocking them, but we look for the Ascension Parish schools to do well, and, and uh, we certainly would like to see a victory and, and, and a playoff berth for you. Absolutely. We're looking forward to it, and uh, I hope everybody in Ascension Parish has a good week this week, and uh, by the way, Ascension Catholic, how about those Bulldogs? Oh, yeah, they're doing Big, good. big win last week. Absolutely. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. We've got Players of the Week, a lot more coming up. Stay with us. We're right here at Rafino's. Player of the Week Award, and our corporate sponsor for the Offensive Player of the Week is Galvez Seafood Company. Our plaque sponsor is Carly Co. Cafe. And this week, Blayton Lewis receives the award. Will you rush for two touchdowns and helping defeat Broadmoor? Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about it. What had transpired in the game? It was just mainly come out there, have a good, you know, attitude, you know, show everybody, you know, that I, you know, I'm capable of, you know, rushing for two touchdowns and being trying to be the best player out there and, you know, carrying my team for the for the win. There you go. And also our defensive player of the week, our corporate sponsor for the defensive player is Galvez Seafood Company. Our plaque sponsor is Carlico Cafe. And Jerron Blakes receives the award. Tell us about the game and uh, what kind of game you had. Um, it's just uh, I tried my best to uh, support our defense and uh, play to the best of my ability and go out there every play and give it all I got. All right, congratulations to our players of the week. Exercising is my life, so when I had to stop because of my foot and ankle pain, I was absolutely devastated. I chose Peak and they taught me how to relieve the pain. They really do bring out the athlete in everyone. Choose Peak. Choose Peak Performance Physical Therapy. Marshawn's interior and hardware specialist, you got it made. Come into our showroom and let our experts guide you through our large selection of today's latest trends. Marshawn's flooring and countertop collections offer these styles with unbelievable prices. And at Marshawn's, we install it all. 
Come in to see all of the promotions and specials going on now. With Marshawn's interior and hardware specialist, you got it made. Welcome to Premier Lanes Entertainment Center. Have the ultimate birthday party and have it catered. Book your private party in the Ascension Zone. Bring the whole family for fun and games at Action Alley Arcade. Enjoy Spin Zone bumper cars and laser maze. Visit the famous Ball Wall Cafe, including our Slammin' Ball Wall Pizza. Ask about the upcoming league bowling. Premier Lanes Entertainment Center, 1414 Airline Highway Gonzales. Book your party now. Call 621 Bowl. Bruyette's Automotive Paint and Body are collision repair specialists. Their certified trained technicians offer state-of-the-art repair. They offer free estimates and all insurance claims are welcome. Bruyette's Automotive Paint and Body. Selling your home? Rick Gotro with Realty Executives in Prairieville can do a comparative market analysis to properly value your home before it goes on the market. Call Ricky today, 715-7256. Automotive repairs, we've got you covered. And Sanima Muffler and Brake Service. See us for CV shaft work, brakes, tune-ups, air conditioner, tires and diagnostics. Tires convenient locations. Vedrine's Portable Buildings invites you to visit their new location on the Airline Highway in Prairieville. Vedrine's offers free estimates, free delivery in surrounding areas, and setup. We do workshops, outdoor kitchens, even snowball stands. Vedrine's Portable Buildings. Welcome back to the show, everyone here at Rafino's. Larry Matson with you, and we've got David Oliver, Coach O, to talk about Santa Monica football, being up on Baltimore 49-8 to at the pit. And what a game K.J. Franklin had, huh? Well, he did. He had a great game. He had uh, five total touchdowns. He had three receiving and uh, two rushing. He's just a very versatile uh, two-way player. You know, he did the same things on defense last year. And we're asking him to play a bunch more offense, and uh, he's coming through for us big time. Had three touchdowns in the first quarter. Yeah, he started <laughs> off hot. And I tell you, you know, everyone talks about scoring touchdowns as an offensive thing, but really it's a team thing. Uh, our special teams was getting this great field position. Our defense has just been playing tremendous really all year long with giving us short fields to work with. So, you know, that's how you score a lot of points is uh, you play great special teams and great defense. Your defense held their team totally to a hundred, less than 100 yards overall. That's incredible. Uh, there, it was, a, you know, another great performance. Those guys are playing solid and, uh, you know, the defensive line stands out on a weekly basis. The secondary consistently makes plays. and. Uh, it's you know that's nice to be able to be in every game that you're in because of good defense and your special teams in all three facets. Yep, they're all playing well right now. Uh, offensively, you had 317 yards rushing, 105 yards passing. Of course, you didn't have to pass that much, and, and with 300 yards on the ground, so it was a good team win. It was a uh, 21 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, so it was uh, you know you pretty well put away early. 49 to eight was the final, and uh, now it's a uh, uh, I don't want to get into it too early here because I've got a time frame for to, to do the interview, but um, with that victory, you you put yourself in a pretty good position for the, for the end of the year here. Yeah, you know, we still have a lot of things to work for. Uh, you know, one of our goals is a winning season. We accomplished that a few weeks ago. Uh, another thing we shoot for regularly is the Ascension Paris Championship. So um, we beat Dutchtown and uh, EA also beat Dutchtown, so obviously Whoever wins this game can stake that mythical claim, but you know that means a lot to our community and the kids to be able to win that. And uh, you know, besides the fact that that's our biggest rival, uh, you know, that's always a big game. Uh, we're another goal we have is to have a home playoff game every year. And uh, you know, right now we're sitting, you know, depending on where you look, anywhere between you know 12 and 14. So uh, you know, it looks like uh, that's a game that we're going to have to win to ensure that we stay at home. I didn't want to get into it too early, but I guess we have to. The rivalry game is this week, and it's the it's the shout out week. I mean, there's a lot of activity all week long, from from, from the first day of the week to the end. It's going to be something happening every day. Yeah, our booster clubs and communities do a tremendous job. They start out Monday with that golf tournament, and you know that course that raises a lot of money for both schools. And then they do the jambalaya sale on Thursday, and then there's the group uh, pep rally where they. Uh, you know, have it at the Lamar Dixon Center where they play a few songs and do some cheers and scream real loud. And then, um, you know, that stuff's all very nice and stuff. But uh, what really matters is that game on Friday, that 48 minutes. That's uh, uh, that's what's important. And, you know, that's at EA for the first time in a couple of years. So I'm sure they're excited to have it at our place. So we're really going to have to play good football to uh, and manage the game well. 
you know, and it's something that goes by a lot of times with the fans and not realizing this at the school, but they have frisbee contests, they have flag football contests. That you've got a, a lot of activities for fundraisers all week long. Yeah, there is. It's uh, and you know they've done a great job. I think James LeBlanc said the number was like 168 thousand per school over the you know the last I think 10 years uh, since they brought it back. And you know that's just uh, you know that's income that you know goes right back to then student athletes at, at both schools. So. You know, you're giving back to the community, and it's a great community event. And you know, EA, we have a good partnership with them. You know, it's kind of like uh, playing racquetball with your brother. I mean, you want to beat him as bad as you possibly can while you're playing, but then you go home and eat dinner together. You know, so uh, it's one of those kind of rivalries, and uh, you know, everyone wants to win. But at the end of the day, you know, we're for Ascension Parish. Well, I think that's what's interesting uh, that. Uh that the Booster Club president for Santa Ma is an EA graduate. That kind of tells you. <laughs> well, yeah, about there's a lot of that. You know, there's uh, husbands that go to Santa Ma and wives that go to EA, and so uh, you know, there's families that the parents went to Santa Ma and the kids go to EA or vice versa. So it's a it's a pretty spicy rivalry, and there's a lot of interest in it. You know, you have become the second winningest coach in the history of the school. You you got to feel pretty proud about that this year, accomplishing that. Yeah, you know, and that's just a testament to you know our administration supporting us, and uh, you know, continuity on our coaching staff is important. You know, there's a handful of those guys that have been here since day one. You know, both offensive coordinator uh, Seth Babin and defensive coordinator head strength and condition coach Dwayne Thomasy. You know, they stick out as those guys. Kenny Gidry, former team captain, that. You know, those guys have been here since day one. You know, our freshman coach, Troy, Troy Tom, play. And so, you know, I just think continuity is the key to, you know, success in these programs. And, you know, the administrators, you know, allowed us to hire coaches in the building. And uh, just a ton of really good football players uh, has been as what's created that. What about uh, the future of some of the players you have that are seniors that uh, college prospects? If some signs, I know I'll not sign, but if some uh, totally committed or are there some still out there looking to, to commit or what? How, how no, that? they're still, uh, I think they're in the decision making process. Probably the main two you're talking about is uh, Johnny Johnson has, you know, a few uh, service academy offers and I think he's been uh, offered by every, pretty much everyone in the Southland Conference, McNeese. Nickel State, Southeastern, a bunch of those Texas schools. And then, you know, K.J. Franklin is, uh, like I said, he was all Metro last year as a defensive back, and he's uh, he's playing like the uh, district offensive player of the year in my mind right now with what he's, you know, he's got almost 500 yards receiving, almost 1,200 yards rushing, and scored 22 touchdowns. And, uh, you know, so he's good both sides of the ball. So he's getting a bunch of offers. He's a Nickel State guy, and uh, he's got three or four other offers. I think they're going to wait and let it play out and decide. What uh, what kind of restrictions do you have, or what kind of uh, format do you have for for a college or a recruiter or a, or a scout coming out to your practices or games? I mean, how does how how, how do head coaches? Well, you know, they have some NCAA rules that you know govern what they can do, but they're basically on our end, they're always welcome at our place, and we'll be as accommodating as we possibly can. We're trying to help our kids, you know, go to the next level, and once they get there, we're trying to support them any way we can so they have success. So they, it's easy for them to be at a press pass or whatever. You press yeah, pass they can shoot. come to the games and get in free and watch those. They come to practice. We supply them with as much game or highlight tape and transcripts as we can. And They have to be careful with contact, though. They can't make contact. Yeah, there's certain times of the year they can, certain times they can't. So, you know, that's an NCAA rule, not ours, and they follow those. And uh, like I said, we've had a good amount of coaches through here. And, you know, we got five or six kids active in college right now that seem to be doing a great job. We've got alignment at LSU. and. Uh, you know, we got a quarterback at Southern Arkansas and kicker at Southern Miss. So I mean, there's those guys are sprinkled out there, and we keep in regular touch with them. The uh, the rivalry game is Friday night. It's the EA Santa Ma. It's the, it's the big game. And uh, by the way, our uh, uh, rivalry issue will be coming out soon. This is our fr football preview guide, of course, for sports scene. But our rivalry issue is out, and and that's going to be a, a, a big issue as well. It gives you the history, the background. If you haven't picked one up. You need to, to find a, a, a local outlet because we've got about 300 locations all over the southeast of Louisiana with that publication. The um, uh, it, it's, it's got to be exciting for you as a head coach. That, I don't know if you like going to that shout out or not, but man, that thing gets loud. It gets exciting, and it really revs up the crowd. <laughs> it does. You know, I think the shout out's probably more for the community and the other students, you know, than the football guys. I think yeah. the football guys on both sides know that. What really matters is um, Friday night. Yeah, Friday right. night, and you know those are the bragging rights that you want. You know what I mean? You can win as many of those screaming matches and <laughs> golf tournaments and 
uh, all that that you want, but uh, you know the conversation ender is Friday night. Yeah. You know, yeah. whoever wins that has bragging rights. Period. For for a whole year at least, for anyway. Right? Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> if they're seniors, you know, kind of linger on forever. Oh yeah, that's true, that's true too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's> only, yep. <laughs> all right, coach. Well, good luck to you. I'm gonna, of course, wish you Darnell Lee good luck too. I mean, I, we're trying to be even Steven here as we can, but uh, we look forward to a really good game and a, a good rivalry and, and shake hands when it's all over. Absolutely. All right, we'll be back right after this. And the Santa Ma Player of the Week corporate sponsor for the offensive uh, player is Galvez Seafood. Our plaque sponsor is Carlico Cafe. This week, Lathan Bourgeois receives the award. Well, Lathan, you accounted for like four touchdowns, two rushing and two passing. Uh, plus, you ran for 38 var yards and uh, completed a few passes, too. Well, yeah, I think we, we were able to get some things done on offense this week. and We uh, executed our game plan, and the line did their job. All right. And now on to our defensive player of the week, the Santa Ma Player of the Week sponsor for, the, for defense. Our corporate sponsor is Santa Ma Muffler, and our plaque sponsor is Carly Co. Cafe. This week, Jordan Bennett receives the award. Tell us about some of the things you did in the game. Well, I feel like I stayed in film this week and knew a few of their plays, so I was able to break on and defend and play well. You know, Coach preached staying in the film room, so that's what I did. It was a good game for the defense. Rubacher's Grill at 909 East Ascension Street in Gonzales, where good food and good friends come together. Offering a casual, fun atmosphere with a menu selection to satisfy the whole family. From pizzas, burgers, and po' boys to steak, seafood, and salads with daily lunch specials and a whole lot more. Bring the whole family or meet friends on the deck. There's fun and entertainment for all. Make Rubacher's your next stop for lunch or dinner. And check out the other five locations in Baton Rouge. Taste the great tradition at Brubacher's Grill, where some things only get better. Your custom-built dream home is more affordable than ever at Roland Homes. Quality comes first on all our modular and manufactured homes. Roland Homes has a huge inventory in many styles and floor plans. And if we don't have it, we'll custom build it, so you'll find the right home to fit your lifestyle and your budget. New or pre-owned, financing is available. Plus, home improvement and repairs are even easier with Roland Homes parts and accessories now on site for your convenience. All at one location to better serve you. Roland Homes in Prairieville. Big O Tires is now open in Sanima. They offer tires, alignments, brakes, and oil changes. If it's got tires, we've got you covered. Stuck on the road? Call their 24-7 roadside assistance number, 445-3635. Big O Tires in Sanima. See Gonzales Military for a big selection of kids' camo and cold weather gear. They carry boots, camo rain gear, rubber boots, headgear, belts, and more. Gonzales Military on Burnside in Gonzales. Acadian Custom Cabinets creates a custom product to your specs. They're professionals that do incredible work that will last for years to come. The owner is hands-on to give you exactly what you want. Acadian Custom Cabinets, Gonzales. Phone 622-6337. Clogged drain gutters have many damaging effects on your home. Debris will cause your gutter system to fail. Call Ascension Gutters and more. Professional craftsmanship. Over 20 colors to choose from. We do gutter installation and maintenance. Custom made quality gutters to fit your budget. Custom fit downspouting as well. And customer satisfaction always. Call us at 225-647-0404. Acadian Custom Cabinets creates a custom product to your specs. They're professionals that do incredible work that will last for years to come. The owner is hands-on to give you exactly what you want. Acadian Custom Cabinets, Gonzales. Phone 622-6337. Ascension Ready Mix supplies concrete for residential, commercial, and industrial clients. They're a locally owned company with locations in Prairieville and Baton Rouge. Ascension Ready Mix, phone 677-7177. Back again at Rafino's here, one of the fine restaurants in the area, and we're very happy that Ruffin Rodriguez kind enough to be our host today for our taping of the show. Darnell Lee joins us now from EA, the head coach that uh, won over McKinley 37 to nothing. And that score really doesn't tell you what went on. Uh, Jason Wakefield, the, the quarterback, had a slow start and just went in, and yet y'all came out with a big win. Yeah, we, we started off, um, went over the top a couple of times, and, and we had some drops. <laughs> Wakefield's been putting that ball on the money. And, uh, you know, but 
got to give, give some credit to McKinley. You know, had some good athletes in the, on the back end. And we came out and tried to put them away early with a couple big plays, and they ended up not working. Your defense, Mitchell, uh, comes up with two interceptions uh, early and ends up with an interception for a pick six in the second half, so he had a big game. Defense. Oh, yeah, we, we challenged him before the game, and, and he responded. <laughs> he had, there, was one, there was one interception on the sideline. He went up at the high point with one hand, caught the nose of the football, come down with it. His, his left hand never touched the ball, and that was a spectacular play. The, the newspaper said it was, he did the Odell uh, Beckham uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, catch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, uh, I mean, he ended up with four picks. He ran one of them back for a touchdown, and then he returned the punt for a touchdown. Oh, wow. And uh, he had another return that set us up for a score. So, I mean, he had a career night. So special teams and defense uh, as much as the offense when you win 37-0. Yeah, yeah. So that's a big win and, and an important win because it keeps you alive in the, in the district and, and uh, it helps you get prepared for the next one, which we'll talk about here in a moment. But. Uh, Talk about your team going into that game and coming out of that game. How, how you feel about your, your team this year? You know, coming, coming off of that loss to Catholic, you know, I, I, like I told the guys, we had a meeting with the juniors and seniors Friday morning. I told them, um, you know, we pretty much we were knocked down by Catholic, but the bell sounded before we, were, we had the 10 count. So I told them we had to answer the bell and we couldn't get knocked down again this season because pretty much every game is a playoff and we're going out. You know, so as far as the season goes, I mean, we, we push our kids hard and we have an expectation that we set like every every coach does and you know every week there's been something to work on. I feel like you know we're peaking at the right time in our special teams. Our, our kickoff coverage has been better. Uh, punt coverage. Uh, Alberto hit I think three or four field goals the other night. So he, he's only missed one one field goal all season and, and hadn't missed an extra point all year. So um, you know it, of course offensively and def defensively if you give up points there's always things to improve on and you know offensively. Um, Feel like we can get better in our run game. We made some changes up front. We moved uh, Balapula Alo from uh, from center to guard, and we moved our senior Cooper to Cody from guard to center, and that fixed our snap problem and it allowed Pule to play more aggressive. So uh, you know we did a few things, we added a few wrinkles last week in the, in the run game, and I think I think uh, we're where we need to be right now. I asked uh, Coach O a little bit earlier about the. Uh, seniors he has and, and uh, how that recruiting is going for them. How about some of your players? Have you had any uh, total commitments yet or are they still uh, keeping the door open for other options well, or whatever? Deshaun Hall verbally commits to Louisiana Tech, but he's received calls from LSU and Wisconsin just last week. Oh. Uh, Coach Robinson came in from LSU the, uh, Monday to visit. And, uh, he, he's going he's gonna to get some bigger offers. We, when we stood him up as an outside linebacker and started using him there, that just that, that, sent, that set out an alert, you know, that he can stand up and play. He's not just a defensive lineman, so he's getting some power five looks now. Uh, got about six or seven other guys. Wakefield's been offered. Uh, Ahmad Diggs, uh, Jaquan Mitchell, Nick Massey, those guys have offers. Uh, got about six or seven guys right now. Potentially, uh, a kick Alberto has been getting a lot of interest as of late, so maybe we're looking at possibly between six and eight guys getting scholarships. They, uh, they really put a lot of, uh, I guess, credence to, to a season where you only have a loss and, and, you, and you're winning and, and all that means, it means a lot to be a winning type football player coming from a winning program. Yes, sir. And, and you know, a lot of that's on the, the head coach and, you know, as far as uh, promoting your players also, um, you know, I don't sleep. When the season ends, I don't sleep. It's not over, you know. Our goal is to win both district titles and state titles and, and the end goal for me is to get as many of our kids to go to the next level and uh, preferably if, if football can get their, their school and paid for. So, you know, I try to, we teach that, that you know, you use that, that approach uh, and motivate them in the classroom and on the field. Yeah, the classroom is so important and a lot of players uh, let that slip by them too much and they, yeah, they don't it, want that to happen. And, and it happens a lot, to most of them it happens in the freshman year, the transition year from junior high to high school. That's what, they, what I call muddy their transcripts with grades that are, that are below C's. You know, anything below a C drops your GPA. And, uh, you know, that's been on block skills. I tell the guys, I mean, if you don't make a D, I mean, you have a 2-5. So, that's, you know, that's, that's, not, that's not as hard to do. But, you know, some of them get distracted. You know, they start running with the wrong crowds. And, you know, and that's where the mentoring from coaches come in. All right, you've got the big one coming up, the rivalry game uh, Friday night. We, we've talked about that for a, a, a week now. And, and uh, this is it, the shout out week. And, uh, a lot of activities going on this week. A lot of distractions possible. <laughs> Always distractions. My house was rolled last year, and <laughs> you know, and I found out it was a couple of my own guys you know, <laughs> playing pranks on us. But 
you know, when you don't win the game, Frank's not that funny, you know. <laughs> so I, coach, I heard Coach Oliver say it, man, you know, end game for us is Friday night, you know. I mean, we look at the shout out on Thursday night, I mean, it's already tough for us to win it because we're a smaller school. You know, Santa Monica's a 5A, we're a 5A, but then enrollment is up a, a bit. But, you know, our kids just come out and they have fun that night. And uh, the, the community, the, the faculty, everybody's excited. We we decorate our halls and make it a swamp. I mean, it's something to see. You know, if you come over on a Friday morning, you'll check it out. Uh, they hide gators and kids find the gators for money and all of that on Friday oh, wow. morning. So, yeah. all, I mean, campus-wide, it's, it's a great week to be a sporting. And uh, there's so many activities going on with the golf tournament, with the, uh, uh, we've talked about this too, Frisbee tournaments, they have Frisbee games and touch flag football and all that sort of thing. But the big thing is Friday night. That's, that's yes, sir. what it all says. Yes, sir. Tell us about what you see in Santa Mon and, and what your opponent is going to be like. I mean, I, I got to take my head off to Coach Oliver. You know, what I heard you mention earlier, you know, him being the second all, second all time winning his coach in the history of the school, you know, he's doing a great job. Um, he gets the most out of his kids, and you know they always produce great players and, and great teams. Him and his coaching staff do a great job. Uh, you know, for us, we see it as, and I almost have to, to downplay the actual rivalry side of it, and I guess you say, really fo have our kids focus on the team that's on the field. Because you, you look at EA and Santa Monica and start talking about the rivalry and the records and who won last year and the year before and whose turn it is to win. And that stuff will get you, that, that's a distraction, you know. So I, we tell our kids, look, we, we're going to check your huddle hours and how much film you're watching during the week. And, you know, we're, we're monitoring them on the halls. I mean, I ride through neighborhoods. And <laughs> if I see our kids out, I'm, I'm knocking on the car, hey, let's go, get some rest. It's, it's that tight week and, you know, we're like, you know, everybody's playing for something at this, time, this point in the game. I mean, we're, we're seated, I think, right now in the, in the non-select, I think fourth or fifth. So we're actually playing, and, you know, the higher you get, the better. When it comes to hosting home games, I mean, I think we're in good shape to have a home game, but, you know, right now we control our own destiny. If we can get a win this Friday, you know, it, it'll definitely help us out. And the preparation, I guess you don't have to worry about motivating them for the week. I mean, they're motivated from the day they get to school on Monday morning, aren't they? It's more, it's more about weathering that storm because the rivalry is so, it, I mean, the intensity, the, the, the expectation, <laughs> you know, it, the anxiety uh, with all the shout outs and all of that stuff is, you know, and. It's such a that the game is so is based so much on momentum. You know, I have no doubt if we complete that first ball that we dropped on the first play of the game last year, if we score on that, that changes the whole game. You know, and even talking to some of the Santa Monica coaches, I mean, that, they they agree because the year before they get a pick six, and then it's a rout. The year before that, in 2015, Coach Bouzois last year, we start the game off with a pick six, and it was a rout. So it's an emotional game. It's a uh, it's, 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 you know, a lot is based on the momentum, and uh, we just want to get it to where we, we, we fight through all of that, we come out good, we, we play hard, we're sound, we're focused, and we're prepared to play four quarters. You were a defensive player when you played. So you look forward to games like this? I mean, where this looks like, to me, it'll be a defensive struggle. I played, I played both ways. Oh, you, know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, for me, it was just it, anytime, anytime you can get out as a high school athlete and play in front of that many people, in front of a crowd like that, you don't need anybody to, to get you up to play that game, you know. Or you shouldn't. And then, and, and you you know half the guys over there, you know. There's there's some sort of relationship where you cross paths sometime before the game, leading up to it in your lives. And you know it, it, the competition is heavy, and you know the toughest part is the loser of that game not having a letdown the following week. Well, yeah, because uh, it's playoff week. Yeah. Uh, win or two though, you know. I mean, it, it takes, you know, like we were talking about Coach Van Lambert and talking about the emotional games you have. That's a big time emotional game to have week 10, you know, and then you go into the playoffs against someone who, who may not have had that type of game the week before. So it's, it's tough, but, you know, our, our kids, we, we're up there up to it. We're up to it as a coaching staff, and it is an exciting time to be in the Central Paris. Right, well, good luck to you, Coach. And, uh, I appreciate hopefully, it. when the game's over, y'all are able to shake hands and, no, and move will. on to the playoffs. We will. Yes, sir. Our Offensive Player of the Week. Our corporate sponsor is Galvez Seafood Company, and our plaque sponsor is Pot and Paddle Jambalaya Kitchen. Alberto Ontiveros. That, did I say your name right? Yes, sir. Okay, you received the award this week. And uh, tell us a little bit about what you did in the game. I made a field goal, and that got us the first points on the board, and I kicked a touchback. I did really well. Now that was a good game for the first half. Yes, sir. 
<laughs> All right. And uh, so you had a good game. And also for the uh, defensive player of the week who is not here today, our corporate sponsor is Santa Mom Muffler, and our plaque sponsor is Pot and Paddle Jambalaya Kitchen. And uh, Kirk, we call him Kirk. That's the way he's listed in the in the program book. Uh, Kirk Kernan receives the award. What do you guys call him? Kate Kernan. Kate, okay. I, it must be his nickname. So congratulations, guys, on winning the Player of the Week. Need paint and body work for your car? Deal with a local body shop that does the job right the first time. Take it to Mark's Body Shop in Sanama. They do top-notch body repairs and painting. Mark's Body Shop. Cajun Matt has mat sales and rentals. Cajun Matt is locally owned and operated by Reggie Sheets. Call Reggie for all of your mat sales or rental needs. 223-7612 or 644-9940. 23rd Judicial District Attorney Ricky Babin wishes all teams in Ascension, Assumption, and St. James Parishes good luck this football season. Stay focused and set your sights on getting to the Superdome. When you need prevention or treatment of pests, call Cotton's Pest Control. They've been treating residential and commercial firms with pest control for nearly 50 years, helping dangerous species. Call Cotton's Pest Control. Experience STEM learning for your child. Science, technology, engineering, and math. These learning programs are available at La Petite Daycare in Gonzales for infants to preschool. Discover a world of education. Diaz Auto Parts Gonzales is your Napa dealer. They have quality parts, accessories, paints, tools, and supplies. A complete line for cars, trucks, imports, marine, industrial, and farm equipment. They make hydraulic hoses. Diaz Auto Parts, your Napa dealer. Gronyard's Furniture on Railroad Avenue in Donaldsonville has been backing area teams for over 60 years. For all your furniture and appliance needs, visit Gronyard's at 622 Railroad Avenue in Donaldsonville. Phone 473-8532. Need help designing or remodeling your dream home? Ask SLC Development for a free quote on your dream home or remodeling project. Call Sue Berenger at 413-5491. The uh, shout-out week, of course, the big game Friday night, EA in Santa Ma on November the 2nd, that's Friday. But uh, we've got the shout-out the night before, and we've got special guest James LeBlanc, who wears a lot of hats in the parish, and now you're talking uh, shout-out. So tell us about Yeah, it. so, you know, we, we're blessed. You know, over the last 10 years, this shout-out committee has been able to give East Ascension High School and Santa Mo High School $168,000 per year, uh, you know, per school. And uh, I tell you, it's been a uh, it's been a good ride. It's been a good committee. A lot of people working hard. And uh, there's not a finer rivalry in the state of Louisiana when it comes to uh, East Ascension and Santa Mo. Of course, it all started off with the week with the, with the golf tournament, which has been concluded last week. And that's right. And then you've got this. Uh, and there's a lot of other things going on. Oh yeah, they do. Uh, they do all week long. They do. Of course, the golf tournament is over with now. But they do. You know, they collect food. Uh, for the needy, they do flag football, they do frisbee throws, they do um, the shout out event which will take place uh, you know, uh, on November 1st and then all of a sudden the big game on November 2nd on Burnside which is the uh, the rivalry of the state of Louisiana. Well, this, and it's the Super Bowl for the, for the Super Paris. Bowl, that's right. It's, <laughs> it's almost the Super Bowl for the state. I mean, I've, t I've been around for a long time, and I can't really find anybody that can tell me any rivalry bigger than this one right here. Well, it's going to be EA and uh, Santa Mar Friday night, the uh, rivalry game, which we talked about with the coaches and so on. But uh, what... what uh, um, how did you get involved with all this? Because you're, you're well, an EA guy. I mean, yeah, so I played four years. I played 82, 83, 84, 85 for East Ascension. Matter of fact, I was on the only, uh, the only undefeated team for East Ascension back in 1982 whenever they had some, uh, some outstanding players. So I've, I've been fortunate to be able to play four years for East Ascension, and I've been fortunate to be on my 13th year now as the Booster Club president for the Gators. People say, man, how in the world can you do that? I say, <laughs> I say, man, look, you know, parents got to do what their kids what their kids do, you know. So all my kids went to Santa Mall, and, of course, I went to East Ascension. But that's what makes this thing so great. That's what makes this robbery so great. You know, you got parents that went to East Ascension. You got kids that go to Santa Mall, and uh, it's just a great, great robbery. 
but I don't want people to lose focus of the uh, num number one thing. You know, it's a friendship thing, it's a fellowship thing, but the biggest thing is is raising money for these for these two schools. I get a kick out of watching some college football games on TV, and uh, even in the pros it'll happen, but they'll show a, a shot maybe of a husband, wife, or a boyfriend, girlfriend. One's wearing the hat. That's right. Serve one team and sit right next to them. Oh, I can't tell you how many East Ascension <laughs> Santa Maul shirts are combined together into one. <laughs> You know, but uh, again, it's a it's a big uh, it's a big week. We uh, I've said it on a couple of shows that we've done over the last ten years. We actually call it Hell Week because it's something to do every single night, and uh, that not a whole lot of people sleep during that week. Uh, people are guarding their houses uh, for the toilet paper rolls, and it's just a it's just a great time in Ascension Parish. Rubacher's Grill at 909 East Ascension Street in Gonzales, where good food and good friends come together. Offering a casual, fun atmosphere with a menu selection to satisfy the whole family. From pizzas, burgers, and po' boys to steak, seafood, and salads with daily lunch specials and a whole lot more. Bring the whole family or meet friends on the deck. There's fun and entertainment for all. Make Rubacher's your next stop for lunch or dinner. And check out the other five locations in Baton Rouge. Taste the great tradition at Rubacher's Grill, where some things only get better. Former LSU coach Butch Pierre has written a new book. It's called Growing Up Great. Besides coaching, it includes life lessons learned. Growing Up Great makes a great gift this upcoming holiday season. Go to butchpierre.com to find out more. If it's glass you need, you can depend on Airline Glass and Upholstery, 724 Airline Highway, Gonzales. They've been taking care of your glass and upholstery needs since 1972. Give Stephen or Tanya a call today at 647-1040. Pot and Paddle Jambalaya Kitchen with three locations offering daily lunch specials is one of our newest sponsors. Pot and Paddle for dine-in, carry-out, and catering. A great place for lunch seven days a week. Baton Rouge, Denham Springs, and here in Gonzales on Cabela's Parkway. Check them out online at potandpaddle.com. Tony Bacala is proud to be your representative serving District 59. Best wishes, Gators, Spartans, and Griffins. Good luck in the playoffs. Here's hoping that you make it all the way to the Dome. This message from Representative Tony Bacala. Clogged drain gutters have many damaging effects on your home. Debris will cause your gutter system to fail. Call Ascension Gutters and more. Professional craftsmanship. Over 20 colors to choose from. We do gutter installation and maintenance. Custom made quality gutters to fit your budget. Custom fit downspouting as well. And customer satisfaction always. Call us at 225-647-0404. Pookie Babin with LeBlanc Nissan is the man to see when shopping for your next new or pre-owned car. Come to the number one dealership in the area, LeBlanc Nissan in Prairieville. Pookie says good luck to all Ascension Parish teams in the playoffs. Welcome back to Colorado Cafe. Once again, we're going to be talking now with a very special guest, Butch Pierre. Our special guest has a book called Growing Up Great, Life Lessons and Coaching, and this just came out in September, so it's really new and something great to pick up for Christmas, maybe for a gift or whatever. Congratulations, Coach, first of all. Thank you. Thank and you very welcome much. Welcome back home again. Yeah, it's great to be here, always. Former Santa Mall High School American who went on to Mississippi State to play college basketball and has coached at LSU. You were there about a decade, I don't know, a good while, as an assistant, associate head coach, and even a head coach for an interim period. Yes, you know, 11 years, 11 fond mem memories, and uh, my family practically grew at LSU. Now, he has been with five college programs, and in your book, I didn't read the whole thing, but I did read parts, I have to admit, for the okay. interview, okay. that you said that you probably had the ability at, at, with the team that you had to win a national championship, but circumstances and things changed during the course of the season, but you really felt like every time you had a championship-type team. Yeah, I had an opportunity to win, shoot, at least 10, 15 conference championships. And uh, out of all those teams, there was five teams that I thought could win a national championship and had all the ingredients in terms of great players and, and, and role guys, the right culture, and guys who can you know, play at a high level and an elite level, and, and, and just got guys that just really bought in. And it was two at Southwest, well, one at Southwest Louisiana and uh, two at LSU and actually two at Oklahoma State. And uh, obviously the two at LSU was 2000 and 2006, which drove my Swiffers in 2000 and Glenn and, 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 and Brandon Bass and all those guys, Gary Temple at LSU and obviously Marcus Smart. All NBA Marcus, players, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> and obviously Marcus Smart 
from uh, playing at the Boston Celtics now, and, and, and Markel Brown, that's from Peabody High School in Alexander. He was on that team, and he's, he's in the NBA to use the Rockets, but that team also. I want to get into the recruiting and things like that because you recruited some great players, no question about it. And, and the Strobel Swift story is really a good one. But let me, let me go back to uh, when you got the job. Tim Floyd's a good friend of mine. I did not realize that Tim Floyd had a big influence on you getting that job. Yeah, you know, obviously, uh, John had worked for Tim, and uh, you know, at UNO, and they were great friends throughout the coaching ranks, and, and had the you know the basketball pedigree, and uh, he was very close. And Tim and I had been through some recruiting walls, and, and, and I won most of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, and 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 sometimes we develop friendships along the way, and he just told John, you know, they need to hire Bush Pierre. He's the best, and one of the best in the business, one of the up and coming young coaches at that time, and particularly, you know, a Louisiana guy. And John Brady uh, went along with it, and, and then you had a little bit of confrontation with John Brady, which is interesting. Strohmeyer Swift, he didn't think he could get him. Yeah, he didn't. And, you know, all that's in the book. Uh, <laughs> you know, obviously, I, you know, everybody probably said, "Oh, okay, what's he going to say? What recruiting stories is he going to say?" And, yeah. But that was one of my fond memories as far as a assistant basketball coach or coaching the profession is recruiting Strohmeyer and his family, his mom who passed away. And uh, he was unique because he was number one player in high school, number one player in the country. They could have went straight to the NBA at a high school. It was a special deal, you know, uh, at LSU at that time. We had to have him. And uh, so John, you know, in the book, you know, I obviously didn't think we can get him because they had national championship coaches recruiting him at that time. A high power for school, the top five programs in America. And we seen the door keep him at home. And uh, as a matter of fact, I talked to Stromile last week, and <laughs> he's still the same old Stromile. He's extremely important, and he took care of his money. Well, that's, that's outstanding. And uh, it's a great story, too, to read about that. You, uh, you learned a lot as a coach. Uh, there was a situation where one player maybe spent too much time or too much attention, not focused with the team, but maybe with his girlfriend. And then you have the same situation a year later with another player in the same situation, and you approach them both differently. You learn, I guess, how to approach your, the consequences, or not consequences, but the circumstances that you face as a coach. Yeah, and, it's, and it all goes back to, to, to life lessons and lessons that I learned, you know, along the way. You know, growing up in a small town and, and having relationships. And at that time, uh, you know, when I was the small town I was from was predominantly black and and uh, and Darrow, and from Darrow, Louisiana. And my one of my first coaches that's in the book, um, my coaching tree was a guy by the name of Mr. Wetech. And the principal there, Mr. Bartlett, actually brought him in. And it was one of the best things because, you know, this guy who, who was an older white guy that everybody embraced in the community. And uh, sometimes it's, you, sometimes you got to see from the other side. And the things that he shared with us and we shared with him and we got tight with him. All those, all those relationships and those lessons along the way helped me. And uh, not only that, just the relations that I had, relationships that I had throughout my whole career. Was it for me to be able to deal with issues with players and families and single parent moms and husbands and wives and all those kind of things that, that and race relations? Uh, it's just uh, so much information that I had that I wanted to get out. But taking back to the question that you said, when that problem arise, I pretty much knew you know how to handle it, how to help the player out because at that time he wasn't playing at an elite level and he didn't understand that there could be some distractions and it was different issues and it worked out. And uh, one thing he stresses, I might mention, is, is uh, studying and making your grades. You can't help the team if, if you're not eligible to play. You've got to make those grades. Yeah, that's, that's important. That's very important. And, and, you know, my background, you know, my mom and my dad and my family and all that, you know, it was important for me to get my education. And uh, when I was at Santa Mar, and that's in the book, you know, I kind of slipped away on my grades a little because, you know, I became an elite player. And when I got to college, I met another guy who's my mentor. His name is Dr. Robert Bowe. He was a professor. He took me under his wings and uh, helped me get where I needed to go. But education is very important. It always has been. It's been part in my family. With my five kids on the back of the book, I have my family. We actually have, you know, nine, nine degrees between all five of us. <laughs> nine degrees. You know, one of my sons has his master's, and my daughter has her master's in specialist. I have my master's from Mississippi State. My wife graduated from Kentucky, and the other one graduated from Arkansas State. Five different degrees from five different schools, but we have nine of them, and that's how important education is. And I want to be able to and share that value with people today, not only with players, but you know, people that's here at home, and it starts right here in Ascension Parish. You mentioned in your book as well about mentors and mentoring, and I, I get the feeling that 
more than coaching, mentoring is, is an important factor in your life and, and having a mentor and, 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 and doing that sort of thing. You know, and, and that's and that's very important. Um, a, lot, a lot of times in, in, in recruiting or, or, or young guys' lives, particularly single parent kids, and even kids with moms and dad, um, and it don't matter what color you're in, you know, you're going to have mentors, mentors along the way. People are going to touch you, you know, and you don't know. It may be the power of who, you know, 10 years down the road, um, 20 years down the road. And, and mentors are so important. You just got to be able to choose the right ones. And, and uh, I, I benefit from it. Um, people in my community, um, teachers at East Ascension High School and Santa <laughs> my, my pride and joy, and going through the ranks at Mississippi State along the way until the coaching profession. But mentors are very, very important. So, you know, I am one, and I always look for one. And I got a bunch of them in the business with Tubby Smith that, that, that won a national championship that I coached with last year. He's one of my biggest mentors on, on somebody that I always try to emulate in terms of family and other people along the way. I'm going to read a couple of excerpts here. One is the introduction. If you want to be successful, you must learn to work and perform at a high level under all circumstances. Learn from failure, stay focused, and embrace pressure. Um, you're living in Destin. How did the storm affect you? Did, did, did you have any problems with that? Well, I had to go to Mobile, Alabama, obviously. And, and uh, you know how storms are. Everybody get the, the traffic on the right side. And it worked out pretty, pretty good. You know, I had a couple of books get wet. And, the water got high where, where I lived at, but it worked out okay. You know, I've been in many Pierre here. Case, you know? He'll have a book and, signing you know, in Darrow, his hometown, okay, October 28th, 3 to 6 p.m. That'll be his first book signing. He plans another one at Santa Mall later on. And you can also get the book through Amazon and at the website butchpierre.com. And you can get hardback or soft. Rubacher's Grill at 909 East Ascension Street in Gonzales, where good food and good friends come together. Offering a casual, fun atmosphere with a menu selection to satisfy the whole family. From pizzas, burgers, and po' boys to steak, seafood, and salads with daily lunch specials and a whole lot more. Bring the whole family or meet friends on the deck. There's fun and entertainment for all. Make Rubacher's your next stop for lunch or dinner. And check out the other five locations in Baton Rouge. Taste a great tradition at Rubacher's Grill, where some things only get better. The Ascension Parish Chemical Industry Care Group is as much a part of Ascension Parish as the Shout Out. The Care Group is proud to sponsor the Shout Out TV special. Have a safe shout out from the Ascension Parish Chemical Industry Care Group. Big O Tires is now open in Sanama. They offer tires, alignments, brakes, and oil changes. If it's got tires, we've got you covered. Stuck on the road? Call their 24-7 roadside assistance number, 445-3635. Big O Tires in Sanama. Are your brakes squeaking? Is your car sputtering? Take it to Rossi Automotive. Their computer diagnostic test will locate the problem, and they'll do the necessary repairs and get you back on the road at Rossi Automotive. French Settlement Sausage is made with the freshest meats, onions, and spices and contains no MSG additives or fillers. It's a certified Cajun product. Ask for it by name at your favorite store. French Settlement Sausage is that good, yeah. That's going to wrap up our show this week from Rufino's. Hope you enjoyed it. Boy, we had a lot to talk about, didn't we? Playoffs coming up next, and that'll be next week. We'll see you then. <laughs>